it's time for our weekly mental health and well-being focus mind matters with dr sean and our guest today is someone whose life changed in an instant riley foster is a 23 year old footballer she's been playing for liverpool fc since 2020 but last october on holiday with friends in finland she was involved in a car crash a crash so bad it is a miracle anyone survived. I met her earlier and started by asking her to tell us what she remembered about that day. Yeah, I was getting ready to go out like into Helsinki with my friends and we were driving um, average speeds, I'd say. I know the weather did turn, um, but I can't remember how badly it was and we ended up hydroplaning. And from that moment on, it's kind of a blur. Like, I do remember spinning, but I don't remember rolling. I don't remember being ejected. I think I was ejected about 30 metres from where the car finished rolling. So. Gosh. You're still in a neck brace and it was damaged to your spine, wasn't it? What, what happened there? I fractured my C1 and my C2. Uh, my C1 was in four pieces. It's called a Jefferson's burst fracture. And my C2 was in three pieces. So quite an extensive list of injuries, just a two vertebrae. OK, yeah, those are quite important vertebrae, aren't they? They're essential, yeah, like for your breathing, everything, any functioning of the body. Um, you injure one of them, you risk paralysis instantly, and I'm very fortunate not to walk away with any paralysis or any dexterity issues. Yeah, fortunate to be alive. Yeah, yeah. The nature of the accident alone would have killed anyone, but all five of the passengers survived. Just a few days earlier, I'd managed to save a spot kick penalty against Aston Villa um, and, and secured a victory for, for your club. So you must have been up there and then a couple of days later... It was a, a tough moment, I mean, for me being on cloud nine, getting more minutes in the tank with the Liverpool, um, helping us get a win in the Continental Cup and just kind of getting more experience under my belt. I've been fighting for more time and goal. So that game really meant a lot to me. And mm -hmm. I knew because of that performance, I was going to be knocking on the coach's door saying, like, keep playing me, keep giving me more minutes. And then three days later, your life kind of flips. And literally, I thought I, I was going to be losing my life. And there's moments where I was laying in the hospital bed within hours of the accident, not being able to, like, move my body properly. And you're thinking, what's going on? What's next? And then a week later, I remember being inside my mom and just being told, what's happening and being put in the halo. And then remember saying to her, like, I'm screwed. Like, my life's over, my career's over. But just tell me what it was like going from that moment where you really didn't know what was going to happen to you and your career to, to somehow getting back on your feet, to having the halo removed. I mean, what was that journey like? I'd say the first two to three weeks were incredibly hard. Um, you go through phases of self get like I can't even explain it it's like a lot of neglect towards yourself I would say like I felt down the dumps I didn't want to do anything I didn't want to talk to anyone I was mm -hmm. in a lot of pain um it was just yeah, it was a really horrible feeling and then as the weeks went on it got a little bit better I became a little bit more positive I mean for a solid four months I actually had no idea what the outcome was going to be the doctors were telling me that at first I could never play again I'd be lucky if I don't need the surgery that basically pins my skull to my vertebrae and I'll lose all mobility of my neck to then being told four months later that you know what it's actually almost healed and we're going to remove it in two weeks so you wow. go through these whirlwind of emotions of uncertainty but i kind of just took it day by day i didn't get too high i didn't get too low i allowed myself to grieve at the beginning but after that i just let the journey take me where it took me and trusted that everything was going to work and whatever happens i'd be okay you went back to prenton park which is liverpool women's ground what was that like? Personally, it's challenging. I remember putting a TikTok out there and the feelings I felt were very, in a way, like sad. It's just like watching my teammates play and knowing that if I didn't get in the accident, I could be out there with them, celebrating the wins with them or being on the pitch with them. And I had that kind of taken away from me in a way. Um, but being around a good group of people, my coaches, my team, uh, my family members as well, and then also the fans, like just that support has made the journey so much easier. And without them, I don't think I would be as positive. I look forward to seeing you play again. Oh, hopefully. When's that going to be? A year's time. A year's time. Yeah, they've given me about a year of total recovery time. Okay. And it's a long process because obviously I've not had to move my neck for a while. And then also I did my knee, I did my lower back, I've done everything. So it's just a matter of finding the time to heal everything first.
Riley, good luck with your future recovery. We really do look forward to seeing you back on the pitch again in about a year's time. Thank you. Thank you.